previously on Jet Set Zero. The moment Freddy and I got to Quito, we were the only two cast members. Ryan and Jenna, they're showing up and I'm excited to see them, I'm excited to meet them. I've never even been on an, on an airplane before. So I wasn't scared of the plane though, because it's hard to fear anything when you're me, because it's whatever. It's been a busy week, we got our apartments, and now the job hunt. I have dropped off a few resumes at French-speaking places. There's a lot to be said for living abroad, because you become a regular somewhere. When I told them I wanted to move to this neighborhood, they were just like, our neighbors have a lot to say about security in this neighborhood. Should we tell them about the dead guy? Is it dead guy? Basically, you cannot walk alone at night. The video camera for our show was stolen from underneath our noses in broad daylight on a bus. We were in the very last row of the bus right before the bathroom started, and in the middle aisle, Right behind us, there was a guy sitting on a stool, which is not anything unusual because they always overcrowd the buses in Ecuador. And the next thing we knew, at one point, our camera had been unzipped out of the bag. The bag was rezipped, and the guy had gotten off the bus with the camera. We had no idea when it was taken or even that it had been taken until it was already too late. how much days we save the talk for after the demo class. So we'll see. When you interview for a job here, they say, yeah, yeah, come on in, bring your resume, this looks wonderful, but then you never hear from them. So I just had my first interview with Lingua. I think it went pretty well. She got my contact info. She'll let me know tomorrow if I got it or not. And my phone rang for the first time in a month, and it was the director saying, hey, can you start tomorrow? So I was, I was pretty psyched about that. I was pretty excited. Um, I hadn't taught in about a month and a half, so I was you know, raring to get back to a classroom. And dollar is a form of currency, okay? Dollar is currency. What is the currency in Colombia? What is the currency? It was one of my goals for the year to teach at a university, so that kind of happened without me even trying. It's good stuff. They told me almost overnight that they were interested. So I went there, they hired me, and I don't know, I really loved my students. But then a lot of little things happened, and I wasn't feeling very good about it. But I decided to suck it up, you know, as I usually do. I'm working at a restaurant. It's called Uncle Ho's. It's a Vietnamese restaurant in Quito. After I was out of college, I had worked in Singapore in asset management. And it was really stressful and a very serious job. And I came home for a few months and waitressed during the summer at the beach just for fun and loved it because my biggest problem was forgetting somebody's order of fries. It's not like somebody's condo fell through or some deal didn't get done or it was screwing up somebody's lunch. And that's a great problem to have. What's that supposed to be? It's gonna be, you remember the steep little things I was drawing for a while? Yeah. There's like weird shaped things and then I draw a face and then the body has a belly button? Yeah. I'm just gonna do that right now. Yeah, that's cool. What else am I doing? What else shapes are cool? Why don't you like get your guitar, play some music outside, and put a hat out? Because I, don't, I, don't, I only know like four or five chords. Starving artist. Um, what, what's another good shape now? Trapezoid. What's a trapezoid? The city's cool for like, like a week, and then it's like, oh, it's, it's gross. That's as far as I'm getting that thing. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna find like a chupacabra in here. <laughs> oh, it's like burning hot in there. Dude, it's a square room. That's it. I mean, I like being here. I mean, I, I mean, we live in a nice apartment, and we're close to a lot of things that you can do. 
But um, coming to South America, I was expecting like Indiana Jones stuff and Goonie style things. But it's a bummer when everyone's like all experienced and they're the Indiana Joneses and I'm the chunk from Goonies. First try. First try. Uh, cardio side. That's probably the hardest thing for me to do is to be like 100% happy in keto. That sounds terrible. What the heck? Someone's crying on me because of that. You see that? I've been dating my boyfriend for about two years, and then this opportunity to join Jet Set Zero came up, and it was a big decision. It was never really, I don't think I ever really thought about not joining Jet Set Zero once I had the opportunity, but I always knew that it would, it would come at a cost. Hey girl, how you been? I was hanging out two handsome dudes. I don't like that. No, that's not what you think, um, boo. You're the only one for me. Yeah, I know that girl. But my bed's too big for just myself. Oh, okay, okay. That's what she giggles. Oh, oh God, she looked at us. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's, it's worth it to do the things that are important to you because you can't put your life on hold for somebody else. Or you can't not pursue your dreams just because you love somebody or because you're in a relationship. So I'm glad I made the decision to come here. Falcor. It's a never ending story for it. A little incision. So are making a cake? Oh. No. Um, just making glue. And the art scene here is amazing, to be completely honest. It's it's everywhere. It's like in the states, like you'll find street art like under bridges. Sometimes like under, I don't know. I mean, like it's just a lot more common here. Like you'll walk down, like you can film here, like, every corner and every block and every square foot. There's some kind of graffiti and stuff, and I think it's awesome. Look at that! I just made diamonds. Guys, I know how to make diamonds now. Buenas tardes, voy para Cario Universalis. Anotaron de nuevo. I hate soccer personally, but like, the World Cup is like almost like, I don't know man, you, you get caught up in the fever, so, yeah. Yep, three more minutes, so. So I had a two hour class from two to four every single day, which kind of sucks in a way because I found it hard to even leave town. You know, I couldn't with, a two, with the two o'clock class. So I thought to maximize my time here and see the most that I could, I, I thought it was just best to quit my job. I was doing everything I could to be a good teacher. So my boss kept asking me to teach more lessons than I was supposed to. And she had promised she would hire someone else. Obviously she wasn't going to hire anybody else. So I went to her office and I said, look, Either you hire someone else or you pay me more for my, you know, the extra hours I'm working here. So I pushed her to fire me, I guess. So technically she fired me, but for me I quit because, you know, I forced her to let me go. I mean, if I didn't have my job, I don't know where I would really meet people if I weren't working. But having my job has really opened up the door to so many new friends and people. And I mean, that's been such a lifeline. Damn it, that sucks.